Welcome to Movies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and I am in my 1973 Mercedes 280 SE 4.5 that nobody wanted except me. I just bought it, and it is a beautiful original classic, original paint, original interior, 4.5 liter V8 engine, and in beautiful condition. But despite that, nobody wanted this car, and it seems like nobody wants this generation of Mercedes S-Class, even though it has so much going for it. Now, just the 30 mile or so drive up to the car wizards in this thing has really impressed me because in 1973, all the American competition was kind of built to the US 55 mile an hour speed limit. So when you get up to speeds at modern highways, uh, 75 in this case, they feel really, really stretched out. With this thing, it was built for the Audubon, so 75 felt actually kind of slow. I couldn't tell how fast I was going though, unless I had my phone app, the Waze app out, because uh, the speedometer in this car doesn't work. The previous owner said he disconnected it because something in there was noisy when it was cold. Not sure what that's all about, but one of the reasons why nobody may have wanted this car is because, uh, well, the issues it has. It does have a few minor issues, but they seem minor to me. They don't seem super major, but that's why I'm heading up to the car wizards and he can be the judge of whether I bought a, uh, a very original, nice, polished turd or not. In addition, there's a couple of finished cars up here that I'm very, very excited about and we'll check in on other projects. But before we visit the wizard, I would like to thank Manscaped, the premium brand for men's grooming and hygiene products for sponsoring this video. And if you watched my channel for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of Manscaped and their perfect package kit. The all-in-one grooming tools and formulations for the modern man, and they've sent me their latest version here. I'm really excited to be one of the first to have the Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof cordless trimmer, and it is impressive, the performance and craftsmanship here. The 4.0 has advanced ceramic blades with skin-safe technology. This helps reduce nicks and cuts and can easily be replaced with a new blade so you can groom with confidence. It's also cordless and waterproof so you can trim in the shower and it has a really cool new wireless charging dock that makes things very simple. There are also new features like a travel lock to stop the trimmer from getting bumped on in your suitcase, four different trim lengths, and cool little LEDs that show you how much battery life is left in your trimmer, which is up to 90 minutes on a single charge. So it's a great product, and what I like about it is how quickly and safely things get done down there. So support me and my generous sponsors. Go to manscaped.com slash hoovies, which is linked below. And during checkout, use the code hoovies for 20% off your lawnmower 4.0. Your balls will thank you. And they will look like somebody we know, at least the top of their head. Weezard! What are you looking at the top of my head? Hello, Weezard. Uh, no reason. I just okay. wanted to show the top of your head. I just bought this and it was a car that nobody wanted. A 1973 Mercedes 280 SE 4.5. Nobody wanted this? Nobody wanted it. I want it. I'll take it. Well, you had every opportunity to buy it. It didn't <laughs> sell for $7,600 on Bring a Trailer. So thousands of people saw it and didn't bid. And then it's been on eBay. It's been advertised everywhere. I finally bought it for only $9,000. You just don't see that color anymore. No, and it's original paint wizard. This is all original everything inside and out. It's beautiful. Not many issues though. Really, at least that I've noticed. Okay, we'll see. Number one, speedometer doesn't work. He said he disconnected it because it was noisy. At the inside of the speedometer is probably making ticking noises or something. Right. Uh, air conditioning blows. He said it blew cold. It doesn't blow cold, but it only blows at one fan speed. When you try and dial it down, it feels all crunchy. It's a mechanical. Yeah. 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 Kind of like that. The horsehair padding in the seats is gone. Mm. And other than that, I didn't notice any leaks. I didn't notice any problems driving it up here going 80 miles an hour in a 19, a 50 year old car. This was the pinnacle of Mercedes-Benz in the 60s and 70s. They were just tanks. I completely agree, and I just don't understand why nobody wanted this car. And there is one special thing with it as well that I'm really excited to look at up on the lift, and that's the uh, suspension on this thing. I guess they were experimenting with hydraulic suspension mm -hmm. uh, with this at the tail end of the 108, and uh, I looked at it. I can't make any sense of it. But I think before we put it up on the lift, why don't you give me a tour of what's going on? You said there's a few things that are finished, right? Yep. There's one, two, three cars that are finished. Really? Yeah. Well, it's not Apollo 911 that's finished. 
or the mystery project or any of that tarp that I really need to unveil someday. Yeah, those aren't done. That hasn't even been started on. Uh, so. uh, but Lamborghini? Yes, we put a new idler pulley on it, and it's quiet. So the belt squeak is gone? Yes. Gone forever? Hopefully forever. I don't know what else to replace. Everything's new on it. The belt, the tensioner, the idler. The... You know what that means, Wizard? What's that? For the first time, all three Lambos are actually working. All three of them are all, working at the all, same the time. The Countach needs to come up for the climate control stuff, but it's all three of them. They all run and drive? They could all drive anywhere right now. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Well, I'll have to come get this soon, but what else is finished? Your Cadillac is done. Really? This is a Hoopty Rescue Mission. My 1987 Cadillac Fleetwood Brom was completely repainted and had been sitting for over 10 years, so I see it's all back together, all the trim, all the... the fender fillers or whatever they call them. Mm -hmm. Interior, back together, Yep. and fully functional? And AC, everything's fully functional, and we redid the whole AC system. It's nice, ice cold AC now. Wonderful. The third one is Van Damme. Oh, oh. my 2001 Bentley Azure, formerly owned by Jean-Claude Van Damme, that uh, was just up here. Yes. It's always a Bentley that is up here, and I thought it was coming back for a coolant leak, but it, it wasn't a coolant leak, was it? No. Mineral oil. It was wet, shiny balls here. Ah, uh, ah. Oh. I see. Why is one green and one silver? Someone's replaced one sometime in the past. It looks like an aftermarket one or something, but we put green OEM ones on. Both of them are green now. I see. This so is the valve block was leaking, and also, if we're going to go that far, we went ahead and did the accumulators. They're only like 70 bucks a piece for the accumulators. I see. It makes sense just to put two new ones and be done with it. Okay. So that's the next link in the chain for mineral oil leaks. So I'll drive it a little bit, and then the next thing will probably start leaking soon. Probably. Right. Yeah. I see you're getting Azures in here. I'll probably be the last one. Really? Except for yours, yes. Really? Yeah. You're not liking them very much. Well, I like working on them. I have a video out, or at least coming out, on that particular car over there, and I mentioned how I like working on them, but nobody wants to pay to get them fixed properly. Yes. Well, it makes very little sense unless you have a YouTube channel where you talk about how much cars break, which this right. is an excellent car for that. Uh, but otherwise, it makes no sense with the constant mineral oil and uh, it looks like the top screwed up on that one. Yes. There's like two top repairs on this car that I think it totals $15,000 for two uh, top repairs because right. all the hydraulics and things is just absolutely insane. Which basically one top repair and mineral oil repair on this would pay for the entire like engine replacement and... Uh, well, a complete new engine on this Corvette, 66 Corvette 427, mm -hmm. and it looks like the new engine is all the way in. We're waiting on an adapter. This engine that they sent is so period correct, in fact, that the boss for the oil filter is actually the old cartridge style. Really? Yeah. And your engine that was in here was a spin-on style. Mm-hmm. The actual, we're talking about the engine block itself, mm. the block. I can't change the block. We got an adapter coming. It'll be here probably tomorrow. Okay. And hopefully we can fire this thing up. Well, that's exciting because that's a big project that is finished and mm -hmm. it will move on to some other big projects. But this Mercedes, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I hope. I hope. Why are you crossing your fingers? You want a big bill. <laughs> I guess so. Ah, yeah. One other thing, Wizard, actually. This uh, seal around this quarter window, mm -hmm. very noisy. It's actually quieter with it open than closed. Okay. So one thing to do there. But look at this 4.5 liter V8. Look at that thing. I have a 5.6 liter sitting in my shop at home. Yeah? Let's just do a swap. No, I'm well, just kidding. No, but here's <laughs> kind of the origin of that engine, I suppose. Yeah, it is. But very honest, tidy. I mean, it's a little dusty, but 50 year old engine. Everything looks like it just came from the factory. It's, it's, oh, it's got age and it's dirty, but it's not been tampered with or messed with. Yeah, it looks like a five or ten year old used car under the hood, not 50. Right. Seems pretty sorted though. Except for this cap. Uh, I'll buy you a, a new cap and put it on. It'll be $87. Oh, okay. Thank you, wizard. All right. There was the beginning of some engineering snafus when it came to electronics though, because this is the, uh, I think the electronic fuel injection computer, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Mounted right in the spot where it can get wet. I guess these things go out a lot. It looks like it's someone's wrote letters on it. Yeah. M and N. So I don't know what it says. Allen. So it's been redone before. Probably. And actually, I think this is before like the Bosch 
K-Jet, all that weird mechanical stuff that tended to be a little problematic when the car sat, right? Right, it has, you can see right here the blue little injectors. Those are injectors like we would think about today, just standard injectors. So they actually were ahead of their time then, kind of went backwards and then yeah, they went backwards. back to normal again. Yeah. And one other weird thing about this car is, like I said earlier, the suspension. I think they were experimenting with hydraulic suspension, which came later in the next generation S-Class, the, the Mercedes diesels with the wagons, the rear leveling. And I see it here, but it's unlike anything I've ever seen before in a suspension setup. So I guess we'll, hopefully you can explain it. Let's take a look. Well, you're looking, are you liking? I'm liking. It's got the, looks like a fairly new radiator. It's glossy, shiny black paint. Oil pan looks dry. Yeah, amazingly, it's pretty dry under here. Look over here at the brakes. Brakes look okay? Yeah. So here's where things get confusing for me, Wizard, because we have a spring, mm -hmm. we have a shock. Yep. But then look above the spring there. What is that? That looks like just a rubber mount. So that's not hydraulic. It's just all normal in the front. Yes. So it's normal suspension in the front, then it's just the rear that's that's odd. But, oh, there's some leaks. It's very light seepage. It's probably just a pan gasket. Okay. It's not dripping, though. No, it's not. This thing's amazing. Very clean. Pretty much a lifelong California car, and it definitely shows. Oh, wait. Oh. Hello. Uh-oh. So here's where... It gets kind of weird. Bogey? Bogue? Bogue. And this should be just a spring, right? Every other car 108 I've seen, and it has this funky axle where it, mm -hmm. it looks like a solid axle, but you can see it's bent. It kind of has one. It pivots right here. Pivots yeah. in the middle. Yep. And they usually have a spring right, right here, but mm -hmm. this one has this. But I don't see any system that helps it maintain its level, like a load leveling suspension. I don't see an arm. I don't see any lines coming in it or out of it or anything. That's a new one for me. I've not seen that before. So it's not active though. Yeah, it's not active. I wonder if it can pump itself up or if it's just a damper. It's just by itself. There's nothing else hooked to it. So that's what's different. What's the leak going on here? This boot. It's common on these cars for that boot to leak. Well, it's leaking pretty good. Yep, it's coming up through the boot. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they sell a kit to replace this boot without having to take the axle all apart. Oh, wonderful. So it's not too bad at all. Okay, well, the electrical issues with the air conditioning and the speedometer, that as well. So AC, speedometer, this the, leak. The quarter windows. Quarter windows. There's a list, but there's not a, a big expensive list, I don't think. No. So overall, I think happy. It's, yeah, I think it's been well maintained. For the age of the car, it's been taken care of. Yeah, is this the bit you need for the speedometer? Yeah, this is it. The speedometer gear and the, the clamps onto the cable right here. Very good. And you were right about it being taken care of. I have full service records here. This is like the very first one. From... 1974? Yes, I have almost 50 years of service records. That's before I was born. Wow. It smells like 1974. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like the smell. You are going to continue this pile, but doesn't seem like it's going to be very much. I'm actually looking forward to this office visit. It shouldn't be bad. I hope not. It shouldn't be, no. Wizard! The wifey kicked you out of your office. She's doing work in there, so... Yes, I stole Crazy D's desk. Oh, man. You are shopping. Well, for a Hatteras Long Range Cruiser. $303,000. Well, that's cheaper than most things you shop for. Yep. So that means this isn't very bad. No, it's not too bad. Yeah, sometimes these old Mercedes can surprise you on parts prices, but... Uh, I'm not that worried, really. It's not really that bad. Um, the rear differential boot mm -hmm. moves like that. 350 bucks. Really? The boot kit's really cheap. I thought it'd be more than that. That's impressive. Okay. It's actually split and just like a C-shape. It fits around. It's got a little staple. Oh, so you don't have to like take it all apart. Right. All right. So it's a pretty cheap fit. Nice. You cut the old one off? Yeah, you just cut the old one off and throw it away. Perfect. On the AC, it could be anywhere from 100 bucks to 1400 bucks. Just depends on once we get it charged to see if the compressor works, is it locked up, or we won't know until we get it apart. Mm. Speedo cable, a couple hundred bucks. That's just the labor to make sure the cable works. We might have to pull the gauge out and check it out. I don't know if it's making noises like you mentioned. 
Parts provided, yes, so you have okay. The parts. Yes. Not too expensive. All right. Quarter window, we can replace both of them for five hundred and fifty bucks. It's a hula girl. Yeah. Five five hundred fifty dollars? Wait. That little see there's where the gotchas with the Mercedes. So that little piece of rubber going around the triangle is quite expensive then, huh? Yeah, hundred and fifty bucks per window. Wow, okay. All right. Well, I'll put you back, hula girl. You're bad luck. What is next? <laughs> <laughs> Oil change, a hundred bucks with the filter, and we'll put synthetic oil in it. Wonderful. Blower switch, it's used is 140, 150 bucks. Yeah. Wow. 250 dollars. We have to pull it all apart and yeah. put a new switch in it. Okay. We'll remove the front seats and send them to Lowen Upholstery here in town and get them reupholstered. That's probably gonna be about 500 bucks. Yeah, we'll not reupholster the new seat pads. Yeah. Yes. At least new. We're dealing with the Newton people and no mufflers. Yeah. It's a, it's a no, no muffler. No muffler Newton. <laughs> right? Okay, so 500 bucks or so, that sounds about right, or poultry shop. But it's really nice vinyl seating. It's just the horse hair. They actually use real horse hair in the padding. It just disintegrates. It yeah. Kind of gross. Anyway. Kind of gross. The best case scenario, two grand, 2250 somewhere around in there. Mm -hmm. Worst case, 3500 bucks. That's That's not bad. No, it's not bad. So obviously the car is not a complete disaster. No. It's, it's actually in very nice shape. It is. And yet nobody wanted it. And you work on these all the time. Yeah. Uh, not, not necessarily 4.5s, but different mm -hmm. 280SEs, the yep. 250s. You worked on them all and they haven't been nightmares for you, have they? No, they're not nightmares at all. So why does nobody want them? I don't know. Maybe they're just, there's a stigma there that they're just afraid that it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, but people buy the newer Mercedes and deal with all that crap. Even even did. the ones that are now 30 years old, and there's so much more to deal with, yet these are great cars and nobody wants them. It's a great big mystery. I have no idea People why. buy Bentley Azures, but they won't buy one of those. Right. Okay, well you can have your desk back, crazy. Thank you very much, appreciate it. So I guess I'll uh, take the Cadillac home and leave the Mercedes, if that's all right with you. Uh, we'll be yeah. all right after you take care of the bill first. Yeah, that was only up here for months and a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Remove all the trim, bumpers, emblems, put it back on 360 bucks. I'll take it, but what's adding up? The AC system. Oh. Headlight. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> right. 2500 bucks. And I had to pay the upholstery guy out of that, so... Ah, $540. Okay. So that's, <laughs> that's more than what I paid for the car. I paid $2,000 for the car. 3000 for the paint job, $2,500 here, $1,000 for shipping. Oh, I guess that's a lot of math. What is that? Oh, so this $2,000 car has become a nearly $10,000 car very quickly. <laughs> huh. paint job, oh yeah, wow. I rarely get away clean, do I? Nope. No, all right, well thanks, wizard. I make sure to never forget that part. I got my tires for it too, jeez. Oh yeah, wizard. It is a purple luxury land yacht. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes, no problem. Look at that white interior. Oh, this thing's gorgeous. Oh, these seats. Oh, man. A little bit of a different luxury experience in the Mercedes, Wizard. Yeah, I love the dashes on these. Oh, Beautiful. amazing. Adios. Oh, wow. <laughs> As I float down the road in this thing, it is so so nice it is so sad how far away cadillac has gotten from its core luxury brand they were chasing the europeans to try and be more sporty when they needed to be like this more cadillac at least the mercedes s-class sort of stayed to its dna back in 1973 a new s-class still a very cushy comfortable car whereas what cadillac sedans are nowadays they're all sport sedans it makes no sense they need to go back to making this but I guess people buy Escalades anyway, because that's what this is. $10,000 is a lot to have invested into this old hoopty Cadillac, admittedly, but it's probably worth that. These things have gone way up in value like everything else that's collectible and people want, other than the old Mercedes, the 108 for whatever reason. Uh, but this car, fresh coat of paint, completely mechanically sorted, will have new tires, which it needs because these tires are ancient and mismatched. And you can't buy a Cadillac like this new anymore, so this is the next best thing. I don't think I'm gonna let it go anytime soon though. It is, it is very, very nice. I'm super happy. Thank you so much for watching.